You are listening to Nebraska on Tap. This podcast will tap you into the Natural Resources District, managing Nebraska's water since 1972. Whether you are a farmer, rancher, or citizen of Nebraska, this podcast was made for you. Time to tap into this week's episode. This podcast is hosted by Heather Dismang and brought to you by the Middle Republican Natural Resources District. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of Nebraska on Tap, your weekly dose of inspiration, information, and a whole lot of heart. Today, we're diving into the world of environmental stewardship and community building with special guest Hannah Pino, the executive director of the Nebraska State Arboretum. Hannah is a passionate advocate for creating healthier, more vibrant communities through the power of plants and trees, from planting gardens to to educating the public, the Arboretum is making a significant impact on Nebraska. We're going to talk about the Arboretum's mission and programs, the community partnerships, educational resources, volunteer opportunities, the Bloom Box program. So sit back, relax, and get ready to be inspired. Our conversation with Hannah is coming up next on Nebraska on Tap. Hi, everybody. So I'm Hannah Pinio. I'm the executive director of the Nebraska Statewide Arboretum. Uh, the Statewide Arboretum, we plant Nebraska for healthy people, vibrant communities, and a resilient environment. And we do that through tree planting, garden making, education, and community building all across the state. How does that look in a community when you guys go in and help out with the ecosystem and the community and information into the community about plants and trees and everything else like that? So it can look a lot of different ways, depending on really what the community has requested. Um, we always say that we, you know, we don't show up in a community and tell them what they need. They come to us and ask, you know, can you help us meet our goals? So a lot of communities already know what they want in the terms of like a final outcome, whether that's, you know, helping lengthen the lifespan of their gray water infrastructure. It can look like trying to re-green a park that maybe has needs some updates, different things like that. So they know what the end goal is, but getting there along the way can be the hard part, right? It's always those steps to get there. Where do we get the plants? How do we contract with an engineer? All of those types of things. So what it can look like from us is really depending on the project size. If it's a really small planting, we might just show up with the plants, help them plant them in the ground, give a demonstration of how to do that and get a mulch and everything and leave them with instructions of how to take care of them over the plant's lifetime. And then we definitely check in over time every few months just to see how things are going. And especially if there's something like what we're seeing now, a, a drought where we could check in and remind people don't forget to water, you know, all of those good things. All the way up to, you know, the really large projects where we're working with engineers, landscape architects to help with plant selection, design. What does it look like all together? Concrete removal, all of that good stuff where we're, you know, maybe we're not there very often. We do go to all the projects at least once where we are really just helping guide them so that they know what's happening because if you're not in this world you know and you have an engineer saying all of these words to you you might not know what what exactly is going on so we can kind of help be that interpreter and help people understand you know all the jargon and terminology and make sure they're getting to their goals because that's the most important thing for us is that these communities are getting what they need to be successful and vibrant and thriving and who do you guys usually work with when it comes to communities like the city planner or um, other nonprofits? Yeah, it, all of the above. So we've worked with anyone from like an Eagle Scout, doing an Eagle Scout project 
to the city planner, to parks and recreation, you know, directors, the city administrator. Um, it really just depends on where the project is, how big it is, of course, makes a difference, and the size of the community, because a lot of our smaller communities don't have, you know, all of these professionals who are there in, in our large, you know, Lincoln, Omaha, Grand Island sized cities. So sometimes it's just working with a, a garden association group in um, town that wants to do this project. So we'll, you know, we can scale up and scale down depending on what people need. Right. And it's so nice to be able to have you folks come out and help out with that and then to be able to really enjoy that area for a lot longer because of all Mm -hmm. the things you guys have put into there. What area did you kind of get started in before you became the executive director? Yeah, so I I kind of have a winding road. My undergrad is in Parks and Recreation Management, so I have a little bit of it there. But, you know, Parks and Recreation often focuses a lot more on, especially in in the Midwest and the Great Plains. I learned a lot about hunting that I probably won't (laughs) use um, in my job here, but maybe someday, I don't know. That's a very popular part of recreation within our state Mm -hmm. Um, but then i went to work for the lincoln ymca as a program coordinator for a wraparound program that they do with kids and families in title one schools so it's focused on providing resources to students and families who just needed a little extra help along the way to help also the students do better in school so you know that does transfer to nsa or the statewide arboretum quite a bit because you really have to adapt to what people need and what they're asking for and go out and find the resources we're really acting as a connector Um, but then i worked for the nebraska forest service as a conservation education coordinator across the state which helps me get out and see the state and meet people who can help us accomplish the needs in our projects Um, and then my master's is in public administration from uno so i once again was able to get a lot of that kind of background administration knowledge so i say a lot like I'm the budget person who hires the plant people, so <laughs> I can I can help when figuring out how to navigate city codes mm-hmm. and to get the grants and build the budgets, and then I just let the plant folks do what they are really good at. I I just try to build NSA in a way that is getting the best people to do the work that we need to do and I I think we've done that. Yeah, and you guys have a brand new facility that you just opened, right? Right. Yeah. So we just opened our plant production greenhouse. So prior to this, we were loaned a space from the university, which is wonderful. We're very grateful for that. It was in Mead, Nebraska, and the rest of our horticulture facilities and our staff were in Lincoln. Mm -hmm. So when it came to plant production time, that commute back and forth, especially because we really depend on volunteers during our plant production time. So we have, you know, I think it's six volunteers a day starting in late February, early March, all the way through April, May, June sometimes, um, helping with our plant production. And so most of those volunteers come from Lincoln or Omaha or surrounding areas and getting out to Mead could be a challenge. So this new facility is on UNL's East Campus with the rest of our facilities. It allows us to extend plant production time. It, you know, allows us to be better stewards of resources too. We're not spending uh, money on gas, going back and forth, right. all of that good stuff. And it also, what I really love is that it has allowed us to get students in there. Mm-hmm. Since we're on campus, the students can come and see what this greenhouse um, looks like, how we operate it, what it does. Because as you know, the university has state-of-the-art research greenhouses, beautiful facilities. But if our horticulture students want to go start a nursery most of them aren't going to have these really beautiful state-of-the-art greenhouses just unrealistic for a new business small business right. as many of your listeners will know if they've ever started a business <laughs> you got to be scrappy and 
flexible and this greenhouse is going to be kind of what they could experience so it allows us to really set that tone and invite them in and and help them see how they could do it because we also need more nurseries within our state so it's you know overall this new production of greenhouse is just a great thing for us to have for the university to have all around we're all enjoying it going back to you traveling around with the forestry service so you guys host a lot of events around the state that are very educational yeah. would you tell us a little bit about those yeah we have we have events everywhere and all the time is what it feels like um, but a majority of our events happen during the growing season so kind of april through october time frame and yeah all over the state so we kind of kick off spring with spring affair so that's here in lincoln it's the great plains largest plant sale is at the sand hills global event center it's always the last weekend in april so you can come out and shop thousands of plants mostly native and well adapted but others annuals herbs variety of trees shrubs all of that good stuff that's what kicks us off and then we do all kinds of things across the state from our garden walks in lincoln and omaha um, which are homeowner gardens where they open it up to our members to come and visit we have wildflower week which takes place across the state but the events that we host are in the panhandle and the western part of the state so ogallala scotts bluff um, garing shadron and that is the first week of june so we always say june starts with wildflower week in nebraska it's a wonderful time to get out and explore and see the wildflowers still this fall we have quite a few events coming up so we have we are partnering with the nebraska forest service and the u.s forest service to offer trees people and towns conference here in mid-october where we're going to be bringing together everybody who really has a, a stake in trees in communities. So our urban and community forestry partners to learn about how we can support our communities, um, how we can encourage tree canopy cover within our state in communities and that's going to partner a lot with our grants that we have coming out so we did receive 10 million dollars from the u.s forest service to redistribute to Nebraska communities over the next five years uh, to really help our community forestry infrastructure improve and grow. Um, so there's going to be more info coming out about that. We also have plants and pints coming up, which is just fun because you get together at Glacial Till in Ashland yeah. and drink some cider, some wine. And this year, every year we have a different speaker. This year it's Jim Locklear from Loritzen Gardens. He's the uh, director of conservation there. He was the founding director of conservation and he's one of our previous executive directors at the statewide arboretum and he wrote a book called in the country of the Kaw, which is along the Kaw river in kansas which is mm -hmm. where he grew up and it's kind of about his personal journey through conservation and learning about the land and it's a beautiful book and he's going to talk more about it and we'll have copies for people to buy and he can sign them so you know we have those types of things plant talks virtual plant talks all throughout the winter so we're going to be announcing that schedule here later you know late fall so yeah just go to our website plantnebraska.org we always have something going on and you can check out and see what is most interesting to you right start networking with um, your neighbors and mm -hmm. your native plant knowers. So uh, that's, that's great. right. Yes. <laughs> and then um, you talked a little bit about membership and volunteering. So what does it take for somebody to be either a member or volunteer? Yeah, so membership is easy. You can go to our website, plantnebraska.org, click become a member, and it'll take you to the sign up. Um, our friend level membership starts at $55 a year, and it goes up from there with different benefits you might be on the lookout for. So take a look at that list. Um, the number one benefit that everyone gets that people really enjoy is 15% off at all of our plant sales. So if you want to come to link into our plant 
plant sale or go to any of our plant sales across the state as we do travel with the plants throughout the spring um, you will get 15 percent off 10 percent off at spring affair but 15 percent off everywhere else so that's how you become a member you can also just come to one of our events and fill out the form and write a check and we'll be happy to do that as well easiest way when it comes mm -hmm. to volunteering we have volunteer opportunities kind of sporadically throughout the year most often in the spring and usually in our greenhouse and then also at spring affair and some of our other sales where we need some help all you have to do is email us at arboretum at plantnebraska.org and we will get you on the list so that you can get an email to know when the sign up is open. We do all of our volunteer signups through Sign Up Genius. So it's very easy. All you have to do is pick the day time that works for you, enter your name and you'll get an alert when it's time for you to come volunteer. So there's a lot to be done and I think one of the things people love about volunteering with us is you also learn a lot while you're doing it. And if you're trying to get those master gardener or Nebraska master naturalist continuing ed or volunteer credits, we can do that for you too. We try to serve as many people as possible. And then tell us a little bit about your bloom box. So this is a award-winning program. Yeah, so Bloom Box um, started 2016 or 18. Um, I get that number mixed up, but what it is is a box of plants designed to help new gardeners understand how to use native plants in their home gardens to attract wildlife and support, especially pollinators. So it's focused on building these 100 square feet pollinator gardens. And with that, we provide a lot of education. So how to lay out what the plants look like they all come with a plant card for each plant so it gives you know the bloom time the bloom color the height you should expect it to get how much water sunlight all that good stuff it needs so it's really designed to help new gardeners understand how to build out these gardens so bloombox is a like you said, an award-winning program. We've presented on it across the country to other organizations. It has definitely ballooned. There are people who only know us by Bloom Box, which is wonderful. It's a great gateway. It's actually how I learned about the Arboretum. I got a Bloom Box when I moved into my house. And so that's kind of how I became connected, which is amazing. But it kind of reached a point where we couldn't manage it as well anymore. So we did take a little break from Bloombox this year, but it will be back in the spring. It will be open to people who have never received a Bloombox before. So if you are interested in the Bloombox program, just go to our website, plantnebraska.org, click on Bloombox, and you can get signed up for that list for when it will open. Um, we have a limited supply, and they usually sell out within the first couple of hours and generally we open really early in March for people to sign up for that so just go to our website get on the email alert so that way you can you know come March 1st to be on the lookout for that to open up and you can get your sign up in yeah I think that's great especially for somebody who definitely has a peaked interest in it but are worried about you know what to choose and everything like that so that's awesome right Through that program we also ship the plants so if you are in you know wherever nebraska you can still participate in this program you don't have to be able to come to lincoln or omaha in order to participate so that's a, also a statewide program yeah that's a perk for sure that's awesome mm -hmm. and then last i'd like to talk about your guys's podcast that you have that lets everybody yeah. know about all different things every right? every other week every other week yep mm -hmm. yes so please um check out our podcast it's called bloom box growing deeper like you said we we have an episode out every other week you know we, it started as very focused on helping new gardeners learn some of these same bloom box things that we have talked about like how to prep a new bed what it means to have healthy soil why you should mulch your plants but over the past two and a half more years it's really grown we have a new episode out today as we're recording this episode we just put out a new episode all about recycling so clearly that has 
almost nothing to do with gardening, although we managed to tie it back. But it's really these environmental topics that people have always wondered about. Like, how many times have I wanted to ask an expert in recycling, do I really have to rinse my yogurt containers? (laughs) How important is that? And I was able to get that question answered. And the answer is yes, you should rinse them. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, I did one on recycling too, but I didn't ask those questions. So, you know, it's nice. Sometimes you, you know, you get a different answer depending on which podcast you're listening to. Like, oh, fun fact. Oh, funner fact, you know, so it's great. So, no, I love that you guys are doing that. I think it's amazing. Yeah. It's who you talk to and what question. I mean, you see a lot of me and my co-host Sarah come out in that where we're like, I don't know, this is just something I wanted to know. And right. I have a podcast, so I can ask <laughs> these things. Um, but yeah, it's been everything. Surprisingly, our most popular episode is actually our second episode we ever did. And it is all about soil. And when Sarah said, I want to do a, a podcast about soil, I was like, I don't know, Sarah, nobody's going to listen to that. But it has been our most popular. Um, I guess check that one out. Number two, you'll have to scroll back in the feed. But it's available everywhere you get podcasts. So feel free to check that out and subscribe. It was not a gardener. I was a city dweller for a really long time. And then mm-hmm. I moved back out here and I'm surrounded by plant people. So Of course, I had to make my own garden, and the garden was in a very hot location with a lot of silty soil, so it was very, very dry. I guess I really need to take a listen to episode number two. (laughs) Yeah, take a listen, um, which does bring me to another thing, which is our website is just so full of resources like that. Like, we have a whole document called, it's called Clay Busters. Mm. So, um, it really, go to plantnebraska.org, search our whole resource database, because if you need a plant list or to know what tree to plant in your right-of-way or something like that, that's, you know, it's like a one-stop shop for all of those things. Oh, yeah, here it is. That's awesome. So, yes, it does list (laughs) all that fun stuff. All right. Well, thank you so much, Hannah, for your time today. And I hope everybody found all that you said interesting and fascinating. I did. (laughs) And uh, I hope you have a great day. So thank you so much for stopping by. Yes, thank you. I really appreciate it. All right. Thank you so much, Hannah, for telling us about the Arboretum. We learned a lot about all the Arboretum's efforts to promote tree planting, gardening, and environmental education. And we just really appreciate how they work with the local communities, schools, other organizations to create a vibrant and sustainable space for everybody here in Nebraska. So just a fun fact, some of the larger collections that the Arboretum's helped work on would be this Metro Community College at Fort Omaha, the Jocelyn Castle, Swanson Science Park, the Blair Community Arboretum, the Dana College Campus, Gilman Park Arboretum and Pierce, the Joshua Turner Arboretum at Union College in Lincoln, and the Clemens Park Arboretum in Fremont. Thank you again for listening to Season 3, Episode 11, Garden of Good, the Arboretum's Impact on Nebraska. Again, you can always check us out at our website, www.nebraskaontap.com. You can find us on our socials. We On Facebook, we are the Middle Republican NRD. But please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review our podcast to help us reach even more listeners. So until next time, have a good one. Bye-bye.